Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Williamson. Glad you tuned in. Spread the word. Follow me on Twitter, at WilliamsonNFL. Go check out my YouTube page, all that good stuff. We are going to focus on when Atlanta has the ball today in Cam Hayward's honor because he got a nice new contract, a three-year deal for $45 million, and I'm very happy about it. I know many folks in Steeler Nation have said, how do you invest in a guy coming off an injury at that age that's a declining player and give him $15 million a year? I thought the number would be higher. I mean, inflation is going insane in the NFL right now. The cap is growing quickly. The Steelers have tons of money. I think his role will sort of slow down as he ages. I want to see him play less snaps. But what I've been saying this offseason about Cam is I think he's a bit of a wild card and a bit of a not in that is he the player from last year? I think just health, he's going to be better than that. But the bigger question is, can he be the player from two years ago? That would be a home run. And all the practice and all the stuff I've watched, I still don't know the answer. That's why I say it's a wild card because they haven't asked him to do much. He's not playing games. And the fact that they know way more than me and you and gave him this makes me think they think he will be that player. Why I also think it's low risk is something Dale and I talk about on the drive a lot is he has an old man's game in that I think he will not fall off a cliff when that time comes. He's not built on exploding off the snap only. I mean, he's so strong. He's so powerful. We always talk about the old man at the Y that gets every rebound but can't run anymore and just you can't get through him and he knows how to box out. Like that's going to be Cam later in life. And I don't even know if he'll see the last year of that deal. And I haven't even touched on his leadership. I mean, it's off the charts. He's Walter Payton man of the year. He's the biggest dog in that locker room, and that means a lot. And I also think it goodwill's the wrong word, but is a real nice boost to the locker room as a whole, you know, and all the team. Like if we do things right, we're going to be rewarded and never play on another team. Uh, That stuff has value. So I'm a big fan of the move. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. From the NFL kicking off to college, Bet Online is every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. Think you know your stuff? Get in on the winner take all 300 grand NFL survivor pool. When the game's over, head over to our online casino and get on the game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of their over 150 slot games. Head to the website today and use a promo code BLEAVE, B L E A V, all caps, and get on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. All kinds of things to talk about when Atlanta has the ball. Points per game. They were 26. The Steelers' defense was 6th. Atlanta averaged 5.2 yards per play, but 5.8 at home. The Steelers allowed 5.4 for the season. The passing game was 28th in completion percentage, while the Steelers' defense was 6th best in completion percentage allowed. Now, of course, this is with Arthur Smith, and we have a new coordinator and all those things. So over these past two seasons, as passing game quarter, you know, coordinator, quarterback coach, Zach Robinson was part of a Rams offense that used 11 personnel, a league high 93% of their plays. Over that same time, Atlanta used 11 personnel, 25% of their plays, lowest in the league. So there you see three receivers a lot, which probably means Ray Ray McLeod. I, they don't have the three receiver set to really scare you. I mean, other than London. Only one defense used their nickel package with five defensive backs on the field at a lower percentage than Pittsburgh. In turn, the Steelers were first in their usage of base and second in their usage of dime. Something I've been talking about all offseason. I expect that to change. I think you will see a lot more nickel from the Steelers this year. 
League average of allowing a series of downs to turn into a touchdown or new series of downs is 70%. The Steelers, in this metric, only four defenses were better than the Steelers' defense. The Steelers' completion percentage allowed was also also sixth best in the NFL. The average time to throw against the Steelers was 2.53 seconds. Only six defenses were lower. The ball came out quick, and they didn't allow much of a completion percentage. Kirk Cousins. He's thrown for 4,000 yards in seven of his nine seasons as a starter quarterback. Last year, obviously, he didn't get there because of his injuries, but he threw for 23-31 in just eight games. He led the NFL in completions, attempts, passing touchdowns, and was second in passing yards through eight weeks when he got injured. So he was tearing it up. It also broke his streak of eight straight seasons with 25 or more passing touchdowns. And his completion percentage last year was his career best. So he was playing really well. Drake London, he's been targeted on just over 25% of his routes over his two-year career. That ranks 16th amongst wide receivers over that stretch. However, he's only averaged just over 27 routes run over those seasons, and that's 70th. They just don't, they, they, they ran the ball a lot. You know, I mean, this is going to maybe apply to Pickens, where he doesn't run a lot of routes, but he gets targeted a lot when he does. Darnell Mooney with the Bears last year, career worse in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. The Steelers allowed the third most yards per reception to receivers aligned out wide, even with Joey Porter having such a good year. Big reason why you make the, the Deontay Johnson trade. I mean, the, the guys outside the numbers killed the Steelers, even with one corner playing really, really well. Kyle Pitts is a strange one. And in, as I'm recording this, he has a hamstring. Who knows what happens to him in this game? But his average depth of target 12 yards downfield was the highest of any tight end qualifying. And since entering the the NFL, 15.8% of his routes have been 20 or more yards downfield. Only Darren Waller's higher. And just 47.8% of his Pitts career targets have been within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. The lowest rates of all tight ends with at least 100 targets over Pitts' career. It's crazy. I mean, he's like a deep threat only. I don't think the Falcons will use him that way. Um, He allowed out wide on over 26% of his snaps, the highest of all NFL tight ends, or and he aligned out wide or in the slot 87% of the the time, never in line. And after producing just over 1,000 yards as a rookie, he's only totaled just over 1,000 yards over the 27 games since. But over these past three seasons, he has averaged just under 27 routes run per game, 20th among tight ends in that stretch. How about this? You wouldn't think about this with Bijan, but he ran more pass routes than any running back in the league last year. And his team target share was only behind Christian McCaffrey. Steelers... Created 2.8 sacks per game last season. Only six defenses were better. Of course, that's led by TJ Watts, 19, that led the NFL. He also had 36 knockdowns. Only Nick Bosa had more. Finished the season with 19 sacks, 19 tackles for loss, 36 quarterback hits, an interception, four four forced fumbles, and three fumble recoveries. First player in league history to to lead the league in sacks three different seasons. He and his brother JJ are the only two defenders in history to have 19 plus sacks and eight plus pass defenses in a single year. He's just three and a half sacks away from hitting 100 and only 18 sacks away from catching big brother JJ. Crazy. But he was responsible for 40% of the Steelers' sacks. 15 different Steelers re- registered a sack last year. I mean, it's great, but you'd prefer more from others, I guess is the way to put it. Last year, Kirk Cousins was hit on just under over 20% of his dropbacks. Only Will Levis and Russell Wilson were hit at a higher rate. Steelers batted down 15 passes last year. Only the Chiefs had more. Watt led the team with five. The only defensive player that took more than Joey Porter, took more penalties than Joey Porter 
was Legarius Sneed. Back to Bijan. He only handled 70% or more of the Falcons' carries in one game during his rookie year. He also had two carries inside the five. Only two carries. Only five running backs had more total yards from scrimmage than Robinson, despite that. He is a special player. Only one running back had more fourth quarter carries than Tyler Algier last year. Pittsburgh surrendered just nine rushing touchdowns. Only two defenses allowed fewer. The Steelers allowed 2.63 yards after first contact, which was sixth best in the league. Highsmith had 11 tackles for loss in the run game, and that was fifth most in the league. They were fifth in red zone defense when it was all said and done, but they were also the oldest defense in the league on a per snap basis. In the second half of games, you talk about how these fourth quarter comebacks, they only gave up 7.6 points in this in the second half of games on average. Third best in the league. Pittsburgh's opponents failed to score any points in 11 of the 50 trips inside the 20-yard line, the red zone. That was the highest rate. That's hard to keep up, but that's really playing well in crunch time too. Meanwhile, the Falcons scored a touchdown on a league low 48.2% of their goal-to-go drives last year. They had four tight ends play over 400 snaps. That might be something we see from the Steelers. And also, the last thing I got for you is their offensive line. Matthew Bergeron's a good player. They have a really good line. He led the Falcons in offensive snaps played, at, followed by Lindstrom, Lindstrom, one of the best guards in the league, and Jake Matthews. But all five of Atlanta's starting offensive linemen played at least 847 snaps last year. Lindstrom now has four straight seasons with 1,000 or more, and Matthews has played 1,000 or more snaps in seven straight years. Really good line, but it was also very durable. And, hey, it's intact for this game. Who knows if they'll last a season, but they're ready to roll for this one. It's a good line, and that that line against the Steelers' front is going to be massive in this game. All right, guys. Thanks. Talk to you soon.